everybody to Hopecast this morning. It seems like it was a little bit early for all of us today, and I think that's because five o'clock's just early, no matter yeah. where you are. But we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, here we go. My brain isn't working yet. I know. <laughs> Fear is our soul's enemy, the nemesis to clear sight. Hope is our soul's friend. It brings clarity and light. Welcome to the Hopecast. Together we'll make the world bright. Yay, good morning. Yay. May 19th. Um, well, today we um, are going to start with something that's going to kind of tug at your heartstrings. So I don't know if you guys remember, but our April 7th Hopecast guest was Lindsay Zacchaeus. She founded the Playway and Healthy 11th and her life story is incredible, and one of these days I'll be publishing it, but recently she was in a, a near fatal car crash, and she's still touch and go, and because of her life and the situations that she was in, even though she was doing so much good, she didn't have health insurance, and so we are sharing her GoFundMe this morning mm -hmm. with a little bit of a song to go with it, and a friend of hers, Joe Hillier, who is who sent in a video to ask, so we're going to start with that, and... Um, and then we'll get back to you after it's over. Hi, I'm Joel Hillier from Brisbane, Australia. A few weeks ago, my dear friend, Lindsay Zacchaeus, founder of the Playway organization, was involved in a serious motor vehicle accident in which she sustained life-threatening injuries. Since that time, she's been lying in a medically induced coma in a hospital in California far from family and friends and the comfort that she needs to help her heal. I'm here today asking for your generosity and help to contribute whatever you feel you can financially to her long and difficult recovery process. Anything is better than nothing. Thank you so much. There's one thing that I've learned There's 
that's why I'll be there for you. You'll be there for me. We can get through this when you'll see. Cause our love is true. We were meant to collide. And in my heart, I'll be there for you. You'll be there for me. We can get through this when you'll see. Cause our love is true. Um, it's so hard for those of you who don't know Lindsay to know just what a powerful person she is and also such a hard life that she's had. And so we know you don't know her, but we wanted to share this video with her so you could get a feel for the kind of person that she is. You can see her with people of all races and cultures because she believes that through the science of play, we can break down barriers and become more united, just everyone as a world. and she was she's been this grassroots uh, movement that she's been working on has been growing and people are starting to come around and now she's having this horrible moment she now don't even, <laughs> yeah we don't even know <laughs> what's going to happen so we just needed to take that minute um so i hope you guys if you even have a couple <clears throat> bucks to spare that you will head to our website click on that image that you saw that'll take you to her gofundme and just whatever you can give to support her um, so that she can, mm -hmm. when she gets through all this and has all these bills that she can keep doing her great work. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. Oh my goodness. Hey. All right. So this is unfair to Tawny, but now we're on to Tawny's Corner. <clears throat> yes, which so happens to be about living with intention, <laughs> um, which she is the epitome of living with intention. Woo! Okay, I'll fan you. <laughs> All right. So um, the quote that I wanted to share this morning is by Steve Jobs. And it says, if you're working on something exciting that you really care about, you don't have to be pushed. The vision pulls you. Ooh, I like that. And um, <clears throat> this goes with like, you know, anything that you're passionate about. It can be like starting a family, going to school and learning to do a career or trade. Um, I mean, I, my mind is handicapped this morning. <laughs> um, but I mean, literally living with, whether it's, you know, just simply getting up and saying, you know, today I'm going to have the best day. Um, when you have made that decision, then it is just easier for some reason. It pulls you because it, you've made that choice and you've said it out loud to the world. Yes, and you can it flip pulls you. And you can flip around anything that happens. So anything that tries to derail you or anything like that. So living with intention, whether it's relationships or um, a career or any of those things, when you make a decision, when you're passionate about something and you do something that you love in any category, then there's nobody that has to try to motivate you. You are like there's a fire within you. So whew, my affirmation this morning is I, my intention is the solution. And that is, I mean, say that. Everybody sit up straight, shoulders back. <laughs> One, two, three. My, my intention, intention is, is the solution. solution. So that's what I have for you this morning. Live with intent. It makes a difference and it pulls you along especially on hard days because we have intent doing all the things we're doing and you have days where you're like, well, why am I doing this? <laughs> you have to keep doing it and that intention will pull you all the Okay, we've got announcements this morning. So as you guys know, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel or if you follow um, and like our Facebook page, you get entered into drawings for Just Because Bags. And so we have two to give away this morning. So you see all these pieces of paper, this could be you. All right. So we're gonna draw two. I can pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Suspense. Um, Glenda Clemens. So Glenda Clemens. So what happens is we will send you a message on Facebook Messenger. Please reply. It is not spam. <laughs> okay. Because if you don't claim it within a while, then we have to give it to someone else and we don't like to do that. All right. Second name is Keegan James Anthony. Anthony. Keegan James Anthony and Glenda Clemens. We will be in contact with you and you will win a Just Because bag with one of our books and some goodies. Okay. So if you want to get in the bowl, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure your follow settings on YouTube are not private. Otherwise, we won't see you. Um, and then, or go follow and like our Facebook page. Also, if you feel inspired by HopeCast, when you're watching HopeCast in the morning, please start a watch party so that you can share it with everybody. Yes, share. Share, share. We want to get hope out into the world. That's why we do this. Yes. Okay, next announcement. Don't forget, you want to win this game. Intrigue. It is a <laughs> fantasy game that actually comes from the world of Emerging Truth. And so to get the game, you go grab the book. There's an ebook, and you can get the paper book. And on your social media feed, if you read it, and you give an honest review, you don't have to love it. Honest review, you get entered <laughs> for the game. But we, I think you'll love it. You will love it. <laughs> and if you tag friends, you get an entry. If you do a video, you get an extra entry because we realize that that's a big step to post a video. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to see more details, just head over to the Instagram channel that we have at Kentstead Media and you can see all the details on how you can win this game. Don't forget, we're giving out five of them. They're beta versions at the end of June. Also, if you go to Kentstead Media, you can see a amazing artistic rendition of many of the characters that come in this book. It is incredible. So go to Kinstead Media and check that out as well. Instagram. Instagram. Instagram channel. It's okay. not on the site yet. <laughs> okay. Another announcement is we, um, I spoke last year with an organization called Mothers Who Know. And you can find them on Instagram at, at mothers underscore who know. They actually are part of a larger organization and they provide support for families affected by pornography, abuse, you know, you name it. And every quarter they do a webinar series and it's about two or three weeks. And it happens to be on Tuesday mornings after HopeCast. <laughs> so go to HopeCast, get a little breakfast, go to Mothers Who Know. So if you go to their website, motherswhoknow.org, or if you go to their Instagram, you'll have all the information. They have one speaker each week and then they do a discussion afterwards. You can stay on as long as you want or you can just watch the speaker, but they're really amazing and they bring great people on. So go check that out. There is coming up on May 26th, June 2nd, and June 9th. All right, you guys. So our guest this morning is Becky Squire. She, I met her through Instagram. Um, I've seen her at events that a lot of the people we know do. She started a magazine and does amazing things to get hope and positivity out into the world. So we brought her on today. She's gonna tell you a little bit about herself and then she has a little message to share. So welcome, Becky. Welcome. Thank you so much. I just have to say I'm so happy to be here. And um, I love both of you. I've never met either of you in person, but we have worked a lot together recently. So um, that's been fun getting to know you both that way. And I'm so happy to be here. So um, like they said, my name is Becky Squire. Um, I'm a writer and um, recently a speaker. But a few years ago, I started just writing on my blog, um, BeckySquire.com. And um, it was more of a way to just kind of, you know, spread a little bit of goodness out there um, in my own way. <clears throat> and I started writing or publishing an article every single week, which was really hard to do for three years straight. And, um, and that was really fun. And I still enjoy writing on my blog. But um, last year, I just felt a pull to do something more. Um, I, I would have a lot of people um, message me and contact me and ask me, how do I get published? Because I've, I've been published on, um, in the Enzyme Latter-day, uh, what's it called? LDS Living. <laughs> I'm used to my own magazine now. And on the Today Show. And so I've had a lot of people asking me, how do I get published? How do I get published? And they would try. And, and um, there's just so many, there's so much con good content out there that's not getting shared. And so last year I felt a pull to create something um, that I could help share more women's voices. And so I created Latter-day Woman magazine and um, it started out as a as just a digital 
online magazine. Our first issue was published in March. So I say started out, but we've evolved a lot already <laughs> in just a few months. But our first one came out in March. Um, our next one comes out on June 1st and it's still an online digital magazine for free. That's our free version, but we're also offering a print edition um, because we just had a lot of people interested in that. And so um, I think it's lovely and I'm excited to create that. And um, it's, for, it's for sale right now on our website, latterdaywomanmagazine.com. So yeah, that's me. I don't know what else. Well, no, and I've, I've already, I subscribed to her. So I've already read the first one and I'm excited for the next one. And I like to hold them in my hand. So I'll be picking up one of those. Yeah. Yeah. That's what everyone has been saying. They want to hold it in their hands. And I did order a few of the first issue just for myself, um, not to sell. And everybody is right. When you hold it in your hand, there's just something different about it. So we're taking pre-orders for issue two right now, just because I have no idea how many people are interested. And so um, we're expecting to ship them in June, but right now we're just taking pre-orders. Awesome. awesome. So go grab one. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you. No. And then also Becky has a message for us and we're super excited because she is a writer and she is um, good at sharing. And so we're excited for that. <laughs> and I think it's so funny because you guys haven't asked me at all what my message is and you don't know. So like, just beware. From, ex <laughs> no, from experience every week we do that because we're oh just I'm just a quick aside we like to we, we don't want to tell people what to do we feel like inspiration should lead absolutely and every week it's exactly what we need what to hear needed. yeah so <laughs> well I, I had been preparing for the last couple of days a message and um in your email that you sent me you said um, you know, if it's, if you wake up Tuesday morning and it's different, that's the message we want to hear. And it's not different, but I did find something extra just this morning as I was scrolling through Facebook, um, that I'll share as well. So I was really excited about that. But what I wanted to talk about today is, um, the importance of, of women's influence. Um, I think that's why I started my blog several years ago um, is because I knew that women <laughs> need to be heard. Um, and the internet, holy cow, <laughs> what a gift, right? Um, what a gift from God that we have this platform to do so many things, YouTube, videos, um, articles, blogs, just you know, podcasts, there's so many different avenues um, for art. And I wanted to start by saying that women are naturally so creative. And if you think that you're not creative, oh, the light's going to start hitting me weird. Sorry. Um, if you think that you're not creative, you're wrong. Um, I wanted to share a quote by Dieter F. Uchtdorf. And he says, the bounds of creativity extend far beyond the limits of a canvas or a sheet of paper and do not require a brush, a pen, or the keys of a piano. Creation means bringing into existence something that did not exist before um, colorful gardens, harmonious homes, family memories, flowing laughter. All of these things you can create and it brings beauty and hope to the world. So um, I would just love to encourage every woman watching or man who has a woman in their life um, to let them know that they are creative and whatever you feel pulled to create is what you're supposed to create. Um, I also wanted to talk about just being an influence. Should I move? I feel like this light is... Oh no, you're great. You're great. As long <laughs> as you're comfortable. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm comfortable. I just feel like the sun's starting to like rise over the fence. Okay, um, but but... Okay, so talking about being an influence, I think the word influence or influencer is kind of a buzzword right now. Um, it can have maybe a negative connotation, um, but I think that we're also kind of getting over that. Um, so how can you be an influence? You don't have to be online to be an influence. Um, you can be, you don't have to have 10,000 followers to be an influence. Um, Spencer W. Kimball said, to be a righteous woman is a glorious thing in any age, but to be a righteous woman during the winding up scenes on this earth is an especially noble calling. And I think that we all have that calling. The righteous woman's strength and influence today 
can be tenfold what it might be in more tranquil times. So he's saying that the world needs us today. The world needs good, influential women. Um, and so if you think about your world of influence, um, whether you, like I said, whether you have 10,000 followers or whether you are, um, you don't like to get online at all and you are a mom with a few kids at home um, and you spend all day at home, I hope you realize what an amazing influence you are. Um, so what I like to do is I like to, to call it the circle of influence. And I like to tell people um, to think about their circle of influence. So think about the people that you directly influence. For me, that's my husband and my kids. I think that's who I directly influence because I'm with them every day. Um, but then think about who they directly influence, right? My husband, um, although right now he's not going to work, he works from home, but normally um, he will go to work and he influences his coworkers right? My kids would go to school and they influence their friends who influence their families. And so it's just a circle that keeps rippling out. <clears throat> and you really have more influence than you think. Um, Neil F. Marriott said, our small acts of faith and service are how most of us can bring eternal light and glory to our family, our friends and our associates. You truly carry a circle of influence with you. Um, and so this is the little message that I wanted to share that I came across today. Um, it's about women and I want to preface this by saying that I don't consider myself a feminist, a feminist, at least not in, in the worldly definition of feminism. Um, I actually do think I'm a feminist, but that's a different story. Um, I'm not into man bashing and I'm not into saying that women um, should be able to do everything that a man can do. But I think that women and men both have an important role in this world. Um, they're different and they're both equally important. Um, so I came across this, this kind of little post by Meg Johnson. Do you know who that is, Meg Johnson? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm really good at remembering content, but I'm terrible with names. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, so this is by Meg Johnson, and she's amazing. She's, she has an amazing story herself. She um, is, is paralyzed from the neck down now. She was running in southern Utah. I, I hope I'm not getting this wrong, but she was, like, running in southern Utah hiking, and she ran and accidentally, like, fell off a cliff. And so now she goes, and so now she's paralyzed from the neck down. And so she speaks. Um, she goes around and speaks. Do you know who she is? Do you yeah. know who she is? She is so amazing and positive. Um, but anyway, so this message, I literally just copied and, and pasted her words and just printed them out. So this is her. Um, she says, we don't have to be as good as anyone else because that whole comparison is moot. Speaking of men and women. I love the quote that says, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. We each came to this world with unique talents and abilities. Everyone is very important, <clears throat> but sometimes we feel a need to be more than important. We want to be better than someone or as good as someone else, whatever that means. Some things we have in common, but the differences are what enable us to, li to live our individual life. Sorry to leave our individualized footprint in this life. I do think women should be empowered because who we are is important and what we can do in, is life-changing. And that's the same with men. So go check her out, she's amazing. Um, but the last little thing that I wanted to share is kind of this paradox of um, stay-at-home moms versus working moms. And I will admit that when I first got married and started having kids, well, really all of my life, I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. That was my dream. I know it's crazy. Like who wants to, who dreams of being a stay-at-home mom? That was me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, and, and I'm not, don't get me wrong. Like that is my, that still is my dream. And um, I'm so lucky to have been able to do that so far in my life. But I always thought 
um, naively that that working if you didn't have to work um, was selfish in a way. So I don't, I just want to say, I don't think that anymore, but um, as I've started this magazine, I have, it, my eyes have really opened into the fact that never before in the history of this world have women be, been able to um, stay home and still run a business or a company and still be seen and be influential in this world. Never before in this time of life. This lighting is just horrible. Oh, you're um, so <laughs> um, but we, we still have the ability to stay home and be seen and be an influence by, by thousands of people. And, and even if you don't have thousands of followers, you're still seen by thousands of people. I can tell you that right now. Um, and like I said, the internet is a gift from God. The online world is often a very dark place full of um, hate and negativity. And so what better place for us to be a light, right? What better place for us to be a light and to be an influence than on the internet? Um, if you feel called to do that, if you feel a pull to do that, do it. Um, and we, you know, as I started this magazine, I am just so impressed at, first of all, at the the women that have come together as a community and the women that want to help to do anything, something, they, they message me, can I um, design something for your magazine? Can I design a graphic for, you know, whatever it is. Women are so creative, like I began with, and um, we need to use those creative outlets to spread light on the internet and throughout this world. And that's my message. Great, thank Amen. you. And that's why we're here. <laughs> yes, that is why you're here. And you guys are doing such a good job. I love it. Um, one of the things that I want to, um, so when you were talking, so you know who Kay West is. We love you, yes. Kay. She's Dear kind of, friend. Yes. She said something once when we were, had her on our podcast before we started Hopecast and all the other things we're doing. She said, my most important role is motherhood, but it is not my mission. And I just was like, oh, that's amazing. And that goes for fatherhood too. We have roles as mothers and fathers, sisters, daughters, brothers, you know, uncles, whatever it is. But we still have missions. And I think that's what you've discovered, Becky, is that you still have a mission to do, to write, and to do this mm -hmm. And I've just, you know, I've always like wanted to write and, and to publish. And so, and Tawny's always wanted to do some of the things that we're doing and, and more that you guys don't see that she does. But sometimes you have to set those, like you were saying, sometimes you think that you can't do them, but we've finally been given this, this, this technology so that we can fulfill our missions and still own our roles. So thank you. Kay. Yeah. Yeah. Kay has said that to me before and I love it. I think it's so important. I also think it's important to remember your priorities um, because that's hard and it's been really hard for me. And I have to remember that um, especially during kind of like a crunch time with the magazine, which I'm going through right now because we're publishing in two weeks um, that my family comes first and that I, when my child needs something or when my husband needs something, I, put the magazine second my family first and like I said that's that can be hard to remember sometimes but sometimes I even have to write it like on my mirror priorities <laughs> I know but isn't that funny because when you try to put them off I find this all the time it actually drags your work out but if you just stop yeah. and give your time yes then it works so it's funny how when you actually get your keep your priorities and the proper everything orientation awesome. things just fall into place yeah so true it's so true. Well, Becky, thank you so much for your message yes, and you. coming on. And I think you look beautiful in the sunlight. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Almost, you know, yeah. <laughs> full editorial <laughs> um, You guys, we just oh, we just love doing this. Mm -hmm. I do. I love it. Actually, I was I was feeling some type of way this morning, and now I just feel so happy. <laughs> oh, okay. I've been lifted. So. This is our personal high, yes. at least once a week, yes. <laughs> so Ray Gilmore, he's on Instagram at, and Facebook as WR Gilmore Writer. Um, he loves to do 
poetry. That's kind of his first love, but he also writes a lot of stuff. And I invited him uh, a few months back to write a blog for us. And he's known as the wordsmith. He is, the man has, I think I have good vo vocabulary. His is like, woo, he uses words. And I'm like, wow, I have to use a dictionary. And I'm like, I'm good with words. So um, I used to congratulate Tony's kids when they would use a big word and stuff like that. So today he is come, we have a video from him and he's gonna share a message on hope. Um, and he has sort of a unique job that he does each day. And so he's gonna tell you a little bit about himself. Um, anyway, Ray is just an amazing person. And so we hope you guys will enjoy his message. Hi guys. I'm grateful to have the opportunity to spend just a few minutes talking to you guys today about uh, hope on the Hopecast and uh, just to share a few of my thoughts with you. Um, I guess what makes me unique is that I teach at a men's prison here in Moberly, Missouri. And uh, I got to tell you, the guys that I work with there in the prison, they don't have a whole lot of hope. And one of the things I think that, that really keeps them from feeling that uh, they have very much to hope for is the fact that their choices have left them trapped there in the prison. And I think a lot of us kind of feel the same way, especially right now when we have this uh, coronavirus uh, quarantining going on. We feel trapped in our homes. But uh, maybe just more figuratively, we feel like we're trapped by the choices that we make and uh, that we feel like we're victims of circumstance. Well, if I can tell you the same thing that I tell my students there at the prison, um, for every problem, under the sun, there is a solution, or there is none. If there is one, then hurry and find it. But if there is none, then never mind it. That's actually a quote from uh, uh, Elder LeGrand Richards. Uh, I was told that one 30 years ago, and it's, it's uh, done good service for me to remind me that uh, for every problem that I encounter in life, there, there is a solution for it, or there isn't one, and if there's nothing I can do about it, whining isn't going to make it any better. If I can do something to fix my problems, then I need to do those things. But if there's things that are out of my control, then I can just let those things go and just have hope that um, my Father in Heaven and through the Atonement of Christ that all things can be made right, all things can be made right. Uh, the second thing that I typically share with my uh, my students is uh, a quote from Viktor Frankl from his book, um, Man's Search for Meaning. And he said that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, and that is the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So... Again, regardless of the circumstances that we may face, we can decide to choose what our response will be. We can decide to be happy. And I know that sounds simplistic, but it really does come down to just those simple choices. Emily Dickinson, in uh, one of her poems, which she typically didn't title, um, she said, Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words, and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that, ke that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land, and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. So hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. And though it gives so much to us, it never asks a crumb in return. And we know that, uh, that through hope that we can be uplifted, that we can be happy, we can experience uh, positive things in our lives. Uh, the last thing I'd like to share with you guys today is a, a poem of my own composition. Um, so this is a hymn to God in my extremity. By thee I am drawn, yet I, resisting, rest the Liahona, still insisting that thy compass is unnecessary. 
for me to circle the adversary. And so I roam, departing from thy side toward the spacious building of my pride. Thy one eternal round forgot, along with him who died. My wickedness was never happiness, but thou and thy great wisdom made a press of my afflictions to crush my sour grapes into a wine, to toast that hour when all things turn for my experience through thy mercy and my obedience. May it ever be so with me through thy omnipotence. Pre-Genesis, I lived as son with thee and knew thy part and plan and saw what I could be. Thou hast sent me forth as ray from central sun to choose my path with promise, I would run the course I chose, to wander far or nigh, forever in thy viewing from on high. This wretched distance I have caused. Thou hast not moved, but I. Draw me again to stand anew with thee upon the narrow path I knew before. Renew my heart again, O Lord, I pray, that I may at the end be blessed, that thou wilt say, Come unto me, thou ransomed one, son redeemed by elder son. Come in and rest in holiness, thy path of pain now done. For now, hopefully that, uh, that shares a bit of hope with, uh, with you and uh, those who are viewing. And... Uh, I wish everyone well. Have a great day. That was nice. Isn't he a wordsmith? <laughs> yes, I, I really like that because I think that, that that's the part of his poem where he talks about how, you know, it's not God that moved, it's him. I think we can like use that in everything else. Like usually when we have a problem with somebody or in a relationship or a job, it's because our, we've emotionally or mentally moved. It isn't the other thing. And so it's good to recognize that and like kind of pull yourself back around and regroup and then and get back on board. So, well, that's what it goes back to intention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Living with intention. We don't intend to, to do some of the things we do that, that turn us away from hope, that turn us away from happiness. And then I, don't, I know for me, so when I have dark times in my head, I'm like, I know that I, I don't need to be down here, but it takes a lot to pull your, pull yourself up. So. Yeah. So I have been having a thought, you guys, that I want to share before we close today. Um, I've been interacting with a lot of people in general lately, um, ever since I started this company. And I find there's a lot of people who, and I'm glad for Becky's message today, because people are like, well, I don't have anything that anybody wants to hear. I'm not good. I'm not a good writer. I'm not a good speaker. I can't go on camera, blah, blah, blah. And I remember years ago when my mom she made me go to church choir <laughs> and sing in the church choir. And I didn't really want to, but we, we could sing, all of us. And I used to get so upset. Um, and then as time went on, I, you know, you start performing and I would always be so nervous. And then I would accompany, like I'd play the piano and I'd accompany the choir later in life and you'd get nervous. And I would, and I would have trouble doing these things up in front of people. And one day I was like, I got to get over this because most of the time you mess up because you're worried mm -hmm. that people are going to notice that you mess up and then you mess up. And then you, and then I would do this like display at the piano. I'd be like, oh, so that people would know, like I didn't mean to mess up. And it just occurred to me one day that I was drawing more attention to myself by having this reaction and by worrying about my performance so that people didn't actually pay attention to the song or the message that was being shared. They were paying attention to my nervousness and my self-focus and so I have gotten to the point where you guys you guys hear us we sometimes mince our words we sometimes mess up but when you have hope to share and you have a message to share that message becomes more important than you and when you start to think about that and you're like I really care about what I'm sharing with the world what I have to give what people need to hear it, it I'm not saying you don't ever get nervous and that we're never like, wow, that was a rough morning, but it helps you focus on that instead of yourself. And all of a sudden you find that you can do things you couldn't do before. So I wanted to share that. So if you're watching and you have something to share, we like to share everybody. You don't have to be famous. 
we like to promote people who have a message. So contact us. We say it a lot. And if you're sitting there and you're watching this and you're like, maybe I should do that, you should do it. Well, and like Becky said, there's so many people out there that have messages that need to be shared or talents that need to be shared that aren't, you know, actively putting it out there. So, you know, do it. <laughs> yes. By the good you do, just like our friend Lindsay, you will you will grow people around you. Your influence, thanks to Becky, will will increase and and so just don't be afraid. And we've only we've only this is like our ninth or tenth episode. Ten. And and we've all yeah. Ten. Ooh, ten. ten. And we've already met and been promoting so many wonderful people and we want to promote you. So we hope you guys have a fabulous day. Glenda and Keenan, we will be in touch with you. So message us back so we can get your just because bags to you. Don't forget to grab a merging truth so you can win the game. And we'll see you. Yeah, we gotta sing our jingle first. Together. <laughs> Ready? Together we'll make the world bright. Okay, we'll see you next Happy week.